In 116 CE, Emperor Trajan led Rome to its greatest territorial extent. His conquests stretched the empire from the Atlantic Ocean to the Caspian Sea, from the British frontier to the heart of Mesopotamia. The Roman military was able to achieve unparalleled expansion, yet at the same time, they were able to control these vast territories with great efficiency for many centuries. So what was the key to their success? Rome's ability to expand and control such a great empire was due to a combination of factors. First among these was its powerful military. Then later on came a number of reforms under pivotal leaders, such as King Servius Tullius, General Gaius Marius, and Emperor Augustus. The development of an efficient bureaucracy and taxation system, alongside Rome's use of roads, coinage, religion, and the strategic incorporation of customs from other cultures, especially those of the Greeks and Persians, would also play a key role. Since its founding in the 8th century BCE, Rome learned how to adapt quickly to new threats. War with neighboring Italic peoples led to a change in the strategy of conflict, as raids and skirmishes with rival warriors soon turned to territorial expansion and domination over the enemy. The influence of Greek military equipment and field tactics also changed the way the Romans fought in battle. By the late era of the Roman Kingdom, reforms under King Servius Tullius compelled Roman citizens to serve in the military in order to protect their homeland. The Servian military enlisted soldiers based on social class, dividing their contribution through their own personal worth. With the rise of the Republic in the late 6th century BCE, Rome's military became more professionalized as the rigors of war shaped their expansion throughout Italy. At the end of the 4th century, the Roman army had grown to the size of four legions, organized under the more flexible Manipular system. This came as a response to the military challenges Rome faced during its expansion across the Italian peninsula, especially in wars against the Gauls and Samnites. However, as Rome's influence extended beyond Italia, the legions underwent further adaptations to confront its most formidable enemies. The Punic Wars against Carthage saw Rome fighting for its very life, and through this struggle learned the importance of improved logistics and long-term strategy. Following wars against Greek kingdoms like Epirus and Macedonia, Roman battlefield tactics evolved to be more flexible while also adapting to the changing terrain as they began to establish a permanent foothold in the East. By the end of the 2nd century BCE, the citizen army proved inadequate for Rome's continuous military needs. Under Gaius Marius, attitudes toward military participation shifted, as enlistment was opened up to the landless poor. The Roman army became a professional standing force, with soldiers serving for longer terms, and the military was reorganized away from the older maniple system to the more flexible and powerful cohort structure, which became the backbone of Roman battlefield tactics. Soldiers were given standardized equipment, with the cost often supplemented by the state. Over the later years of the Republic, retired soldiers could also be granted land in exchange for their service. In effect, Rome had abolished the part-time militia of a citizen army in order to keep a professional army in constant service, which was crucial for waging prolonged campaigns and maintaining an ever-growing state. After the civil wars of the late Republic, Caesar Augustus rose from the ashes as Rome's first emperor in 27 BCE, bringing with him a slew of reforms. The most impactful of these saw him reduce the bloated military down to 28 legions, creating a leaner, more efficient force, loyal to the emperor. Previously, the legions were raised for specific wars, then disbanded after six years. 
But these 28 legions were intended to be permanent armies made up of long-serving veterans. Augustus knew that a soldier's loyalty was only as strong as his paycheck, thanks to his experiences in the Civil War period. To prevent any potential funding crisis, he founded the Iratium Militari, a military treasury funded by new taxes from his broader fiscal reforms. This fund provided for soldiers' pensions, ensuring loyalty and stability within the ranks. Augustus also reorganized the auxiliary forces, integrating non-citizen troops into the military, who served alongside the legions and were granted Roman citizenship after their service. These reforms centralized power while keeping the military in line, allowing it to remain the backbone of a constantly growing empire. The success of these legions hinged on the leadership qualities of its commanders and the political infrastructure that supported them. Roman generals were often encouraged to be opportunistic and adaptive, seizing advantages wherever possible on the battlefield. This strategic flexibility was complemented by Rome's political leadership, which mobilized vast resources to support the military. The Senate and other political bodies inspired citizens to make significant sacrifices, fostering a culture of loyalty and duty to the state. This combination of military and political acumen allowed Rome to sustain its expansion and consolidate its power. The effectiveness of Rome's military was not solely due to its size, but also its organization and strategic flexibility. Roman legions were highly disciplined units with a hierarchical structure that allowed for easier coordination and adaptability on the battlefield. This versatility was important even outside of battle. Legions were capable of building fortified camps each night during campaigns, providing secure bases of operation and greatly reducing the risk of surprise attacks. This was thanks to soldiers in a Roman legion being trained across a wide array of fields. Engineers, laborers, and craftsmen all worked together to construct these camps, as well as forts, bridges, and siege engines vital for both defense and offense. Artillerymen managed and operated sophisticated war machines, like ballistae and onagers, during long sieges while service and support personnel ensured efficient logistics, from supplying the troops to maintaining the extensive road networks that facilitated rapid movement and communication across the empire. This combination of skills made the Roman army not just a fighting force, but a highly organized and self-sufficient network capable of sustaining prolonged campaigns in diverse environments. However, after every campaign came the long and arduous task of consolidating foreign peoples into the Roman fold. But maintaining control was not always a matter of military might. The Romans were firm believers in the concept of universal law, striving to create one legal system that applied to all citizens and subjects, which helped to solidify their vast empire under a common legal framework. For them, the law was instrumental in unifying many diverse populations under their rule. As local communities and their elites proved their loyalty to Rome, they could be gradually integrated into the Roman system. Diplomacy was often critical for this process, as it was essential for making allies, isolating potential enemies, or even creating justifications for war when necessary. Later, Integration often began with the granting of partial citizenship, which came with certain legal protections, military obligations, and some civic privileges. Over enough time, or service to Rome, some subjects could be granted the chance of full citizenship, which conferred the right to vote, marry under Roman law, and appeal in legal matters. By extending Roman citizenship, either partially or fully, to new subjects, Rome offered not only legal protection and access to trade rights, but also the prestige of being part of the empire. It was a strategy that aimed to assimilate conquered peoples and foster loyalty to Rome above all else, which helped create invaluable pools of talent all across the ancient world. Over time, 
the gradual extension of citizenship helped to Romanize vast areas of the empire, making governance more manageable and the empire more cohesive. Most importantly, Romanization expanded the pool of recruitment, allowing for the raising of new legions or the replenishment of existing ones. The raising and maintaining of legions was supported by a diverse and extensive network of taxation and complex bureaucracy, partly inspired from earlier Persian administrative practices. Taxes were crucial for funding the army, building infrastructure, and maintaining the expansive governmental structures required to govern distant provinces. However, the sheer size of the empire meant that the Roman tax system wasn't consistent everywhere. Land taxes were sometimes assessed based on the productivity of the land, but in many regions, taxes were imposed based on the types of land, regardless of its output. Customs duties and trade taxes were levied on goods transported across the empire, which significantly contributed to the state's revenue, especially in key regions like Egypt and along the eastern frontier. Even wealth taxes were occasionally imposed on personal assets, but the burden of taxation was often unevenly distributed, with certain regions and social groups bearing heavier loads than others. The collection and management of these taxes was undertaken by trained officials and state magistrates. Written records, such as censuses and land registries, were painstakingly maintained allowing the Roman state to keep track of its resources and population effectively. The grain supply system, or Annona, is perhaps the most famous example of how the Roman bureaucracy managed resources on a massive scale, organizing the collection and distribution of grain to feed the city of Rome and its vast legions. Beyond that, the use of legal contracts and standardized procedures across the empire ensured that tax obligations were clear and enforceable for the locals who had to pay them. Rome's approach to governance contrasted with its often dismissive attitude toward foreign cultures. While Romans sometimes viewed other peoples, especially those outside their empire, as barbarians, they were also pragmatic in governing new territories. Rome often showed a level of respect for local customs, traditions, and leaders, understanding that this was key to maintaining stability and loyalty within a vast and diverse empire. Even with its philosophy of universal rule, Rome still allowed varying degrees of local autonomy in its provinces, permitting local leaders to retain some power as long as they pledged allegiance to Rome and met its fiscal and military demands. This policy of respecting local governance reduced resistance to Roman rule and made the empire's vast territories more manageable. Moreover, Rome's use of client states and allied territories created a network of semi-independent regions that were loyal to Rome and helped to defend its borders. These foreign elements also came to be an integral part of the Roman army, as non-citizen auxiliary troops played critical roles in supporting the legions. In some cases, auxiliaries were prioritized by Roman commanders because of their specialized roles as shock troops, cavalrymen, and skirmishers, which the traditional Roman troops sometimes lacked. Over time, the long service of foreign soldiers often led to their assimilation into Roman society, and with it, the incorporation of diverse cultures. Politically, just like Hellenistic Greece, local elites were also integrated into the aristocracy, as Roman culture, law, and language gradually permeated the provinces. With each new land subjugated, Roman legions brought back a host of treasures and resources. This included enslaved people who were integral to the economy, Precious metals like gold and silver, which were used to mint coins and fund further military campaigns, and agricultural produce, which fed both the populace and the army. The capture of mineral-rich regions, such as the silver mines in Spain and gold mines in Dacia, significantly boosted Rome's treasury. Additionally, the incorporation of new lands into the empire opened up new markets and trade routes. Roman merchants engaged in trade across the Mediterranean and beyond, 
importing luxury goods like spices, silk, and ivory from as far as India and China. The wealth generated from these conquests and trade not only funded Rome's continuous expansion, but also financed the construction of monumental public works, such as temples, aqueducts, and roads, which helped Roman emperors to maintain public support long after successful conquests. Ports and harbors, especially those along the Mediterranean, acted as docks for the Roman fleet as well as hubs for trade and military logistics. They promoted urbanization by linking remote frontiers with the capital and other urban areas, integrating them into the economic fabric of the empire. These developments helped maintain the flow of wealth and resources necessary to sustain the empire's military and administrative functions. Urbanization and the establishment of colonies were crucial to Rome's strategy for securing and Romanizing newly conquered territories, especially in regions with military or economic significance. These colonies served as garrisons to pacify potential revolts, centers of Roman culture, and hubs of economic activity. Veterans of the legions were often settled in these colonies as a reward for their service, creating a loyal and Romanized population. This not only facilitated the spread of Roman customs, language, and law, but also helped integrate local populations into the Roman state, strengthening control over the provinces. Cultural integration also played a significant role in Roman expansion, much like it did with their Persian and Hellenistic predecessors. Roman soldiers brought with them customs, language, and religion, embedding these through architecture like amphitheaters and public baths, which became cultural focal points in life within the conquered territories. Religion was also a major part of Roman cultural cohesion. The empire often adopted and Romanized foreign deities, allowing conquered peoples to maintain their religious practices while aligning them with Roman beliefs, with the most important of these being the deification of emperors that began with Augustus after his death. It was a religious syncretism that helped placate and integrate diverse populations, contributing to the cultural and political stability necessary for sustaining Rome's vast empire. While Trajan's reign marked the height of Roman power, the empire itself would continue to live on for three and a half centuries in Europe, and nearly a thousand years longer in the East. This was because Rome still continued its vast empire through military strength, administrative efficiency, economic integration, and cultural assimilation. It was a proven formula that allowed the empire to weather through catastrophe after catastrophe, and leave lasting legacies far beyond the borders of the Roman Empire, influencing modern-day law, infrastructure, and culture in many regions throughout the world. This video was produced and created in collaboration with OER Project. For more information on how OER Project offers free, comprehensive, and fully supported social studies curricula, for middle and high school teachers and their students, click the link in the description.